Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back to another live stream. Now I know what you're probably all thinking, Cam, what are you doing going live at 10 to 11 on a Saturday night? Why aren't you sitting down enjoying your night? What could possibly have triggered in your mind to think at such a time on a Saturday evening, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do a live stream? And the answer to that question is, firstly... I don't really know why I'm doing a live stream at 10 to 11 on a Saturday night. I don't know how many people will be available to get involved in this live stream. If you are watching live, then please do get your thoughts in the live comments. If you are watching as a YouTube video, then that's absolutely fine as well. Let us know your thoughts on everything we're going to talk about in the comment section down below of the YouTube video. But secondly, I've just read a article or rather a, a couple of tweets that have come from an article from the Liverpool Echo regarding the future of uh, a couple of Everton players and having read the article and read the tweets regarding this situation I just sort of felt like it was the right thing to do to sit down and address this now I just want to get out the way before we get into any of the finer details of what we're going to talk about in this live stream and it won't be a very long one I've just got a couple of things to get off my chest um firstly I don't really want to be sitting here and doing live streams regarding negative things about Everton Football Club. We're in a really, really bad situation at the moment. We know the situation that we're in as a fan base. The players hopefully know the situation. The manager knows the situation. The board probably just aren't aware of anything that's going on, never mind the situation, but I would like to hope they know the situation. And therefore... You know, a lot of the things surrounding Everton Football Club at the moment and the topics that we could sit down and talk about and do live streams about and do videos about are, you know, topics that are probably not the most positive. And, you know, I'm a firm believer in trying to be as positive as possible. And in situations like this, we have to look at the positives and we have to be able to, you know, try and find the good in, in everything in order to be able to rally ourselves together and get out of this absolute mess. And we know that the result against Manchester United last Saturday was absolutely fantastic. It was a wonderful three points. Again, the results have gone our way today in the Premier League. Watford losing, Norwich losing, just about, but Norwich losing. Um... Burnley, I think I think they play tomorrow against West Ham. Um, you know, if they lose that one as well, then you know we go to to uh, to, to Leicester um, <clears throat> on Wednesday, and if we, if we win that game, then we could well be, you know, certainly a, a massive step closer to being out of, of of this terrible situation that we're in. We know Burnley have just sacked their manager, which will be a massive shake up for them as well. So. You know, as I said, it's it's difficult when I see things like this and when I see certain topics and, you know, when I'm thinking, what can we do? What can we talk about? What can we like? And I could sit here and do a, a live stream for an hour screaming and shouting at the board and, and, and giving my feelings and my opinions on how inept and, and, and unable the board are at running a football club successfully. But I, I look at these certain topics and I think... For the moment, I just want Everton to get out of this situation. We can have all of those conversations in, in the summer. And, and I will do those live streams before the end of the season as well. I'm just finding it a little bit difficult to do the streams where I know I'm going to get frustrated and upset and stuff because I'm just trying to look at the positives because I'm so, so worried about the situation that we're in. However, this one, I couldn't really help myself, to be perfectly honest with you. I've just read this now, and if you're wondering what I'm talking about... This comes from the Liverpool Echo. It was a massive article, basically, about the season and how the season's gone so far. Um, and, you know, effectively just a massive article. Go and give it a read if you haven't already about what's going on at the football club at the moment. But within that article, it reads, John Joe Kenny, Asmir Begovic and Andy Lonergan could all get contact extensions at Everton for their bit part roles in the Everton squad. Now, I read this and I sort of just laughed to myself. I was literally, I've just finished watching the new Batman film for the third time, so I was in a lovely mood, I've had a pizza up for me tea, I'm chilling, I've got sore legs because I've been in the gym yesterday, I'm tired, but I'm, on, I'm in a good mood, and I see that, and it sort of just reminds me of all of the reasons as to why Everton are in the situation that we are in now, um, and that is because of decisions like this decisions to give players new contracts in which I think every Evertonian reading that article is somewhat sitting there and thinking why now let's address Asmir Begovic firstly because I think Asmir Begovic doesn't really fall into the same mode as uh, mo sorry doesn't fall into the same mold as uh, Andy Lonergan and John Joe Kenny Asmir Begovic I've got no real problem given a, a contract extension to I think his contract ends at the end of the season obviously he come in 
last last summer um, under Rafael Benitez. Um, listen, he's a number two goalkeeper. He's played on a number of occasions this season. He's done relatively okay. Last time we saw him, he put in a really, really good performance and then probably would have continued this, uh, his, his, his stint in the Everton team had it not been for an illness. Jordan Pickford obviously returned to the team. We know, listen, Jordan Pickford's the number one goalkeeper. There's absolutely no hiding that. Asmir Begovic is never going to take Jordan Pickford over as that number one goalkeeper at Everton Football Club. However... For the number two, as number two's come, he's an experienced Premier League goalkeeper. He's won the league title. He's played at some of the you know the biggest clubs in in Europe. Um, and I'm absolutely fine with Asmir Begovic being Everton's number two goalkeeper. I think we saw today. Anybody that watched the FA Cup semi final will have saw that even the best teams in the league, i.e. Manchester City, their number two goalkeepers aren't very good. So to have a solid number two goalkeeper who has got a lot of Premier League experience, seemingly isn't particularly um, you know, aggravated or agitated by the fact that he is the number two goalkeeper. It, you know, he doesn't strike me as somebody that is Matt Banger on the door demanding to be number one week in, week out. I think he knows his place within the squad. He knows his role within the squad. He knows Jordan Pickford is the number one goalkeeper and will be the number one goalkeeper for the foreseeable future, hopefully. Um, and as I said, I'm, 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 I'm happy enough with Asmir Begovic as the number two. Could we get a better number two? Potentially. Potentially, there's been games this season where I've looked at Asmir Begovic and thought, you're not what we need. But that is a number two goalkeeper, isn't it? You know, you're not going to get a number two goalkeeper who's absolutely unbelievable because then they would be a number one goalkeeper somewhere else. As I've just said, even some of the best teams in the league, Manchester City, who were on to win the league, Champions League semi-final, their number two goalkeeper is absolutely fucking horrendous. So to say we've got a competent number two goalkeeper, I've got no real problem with that. So Asmir Begovic, again... If the club were to extend his contract or give him a new contract or whichever way you want to put it, no real problem with that whatsoever. However, John Joe Kenny and Andy Lonergan, it just, it, as I said, it just screams of, yeah, you can have a new contract if you want. It screams of these players, and I'm not saying they have done this, by the way, and, and again, I've, I've got not absolutely nothing against either of, of them, especially Andy Lonergan. He's never played a game in an Everton shirt, he probably never will play a game in an Everton shirt, he's probably on minimal wage, but it screams of it, I could just imagine the pair of them turning up at Bill Kenwright's office and going, can we have a new contract, and I'm going, actually do you know what, yeah you can, yeah you can have a new contract, the John Joe Kenny one for me is baffling, and as I said, I find it difficult to do these types of streams and videos at the moment because we're still within a season and, you know, I'm still trying to get behind the players and I know that there'll be people commenting on this stream and commenting in the live comments saying, oh, Cam, stop being so negative, get behind the squad, get behind the manager, this, that, and the other. And I am getting behind the manager and I am getting behind the squad and if John Joe Kenny is on that pitch in an Everton shirt, I'll get behind him like I'll get behind any one of those players in an Everton shirt and I'll get behind the squad. But when something like this comes out, you've got to talk about it and... John Joe Kenny should not be getting any form of contact extension at Everton Football Club, even if it is to continue his role as a bit part player. Let's not forget that this article might state that these players will be continuing their roles as bit part players. Okay, that can be said for Andy Lonergan. He's never he's never put the shirt on and probably never will put the shirt on because of the two goalkeepers that are in front of him. We've also got Harry Tyler coming through the, the ranks as well, and you've also got Shell Virginia out on loan. John Joe Kenny isn't a bit part player. John Joe Kenny has played far too many times this season to be classed as a bit part player. John Joe Kenny is a first team player who has played an awful lot of games this season. And my big worry is this bit part player of John Joe Kenny will be given a new deal, a new contact, an extension, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and then next season, if Nathan Patterson isn't fit or Seamus Coleman isn't up to task, that bit part player in John Joe Kenny will be starting games of football frequently, as he has been doing in recent weeks. And as I said, I've got nothing personal against John Joe Kenny, but he's not good enough to be at Everton. He simply isn't good enough to be at Everton Football Club. And we were having these conversations four or five years ago about John Joe Kenny. Prior to the last couple of weeks or so, had John Joe Kenny had never wore an Everton shirt again, none of us would have been surprised at that because we know and have known for a long, long time he isn't good enough to be at this football club. He may be good enough for where we are now, but where we should be and want to be and aspire to be, John Joe Kenny simply isn't in that conversation whatsoever. Now, this summer <coughs> is and should be the perfect time for the club 
for Frank Lampard, for various you know people at the football club to be able to say to these players that aren't good enough and are out of contract, thanks for your time, we appreciate it, but we're not going to be renewing your contract. The article does talk about the likes of Fabian Delph, Cheng Tosin, but it doesn't give as much of a hint into their future as to, as to what it does with these. But for me, John Joe Kenny should be in with in, in that in that pile as well. You know, I remember I had a couple of comments a few weeks back when John Joe was, you know, putting in solid performances saying, would you give him a new contract? I said, absolutely not. Because just because every now and then he can turn up and put in a, you know, give it 100% and, and put in a competent performance against not a very good team doesn't mean that he's good enough to be given an Everton contract. And it's not just giving an Everton contract, it's playing in an Everton team that is struggling at the moment. And John Joe isn't good enough to be here. <coughs> so why the club even considering giving him a new contact when this will be the apt time to say to players like John Joe, Schenk Tosin, you know, Fabian Delph. And Fabian Delph, uh, again, you could argue Fabian Delph should be given a contact more over than John Joe Kenny or Andy Lonergan. I know Andy Lonergan's a goalkeeper, so it's a different position, but certainly John Joe Kenny for the sheer fact is that Fabian Delph is a better and more effective footballer than John Joe Kenny is, although Fabian Delph shouldn't be given a new contact either. But is this where what we've come to now as a football club where players' contracts, uh, 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 you know, at about to end. And, and since his last contract renewal, he hasn't done anywhere near enough to warrant a new contract, yet we're going to give him a new contract anyway. Is it just to make up the numbers? Is it because Frank Lampard just wants him there because he knows him and he knows what he gets from him, even if it's not, you know, a particularly, you know, solid, consistent performer? He knows what he gets and he's happy to give him a new, new contract off the back of that. Because... If I'm Frank Lampard at the moment, I'm giving all of these players as much praise as I possibly can. As I said in the review to the game against Manchester United, I'm spending every single minute of fin at Finch Farm putting my arm around Michael Keane and telling him he's absolutely fucking fantastic and look at how brilliant you were against Manchester United and look at how you dealt with Cristiano Ronaldo, who's one of the, you know, possibly the best footballer of all time. I'm saying to John Joe Kenny, get your head down, work hard, you this, that and the other doing everything I can to get us through until the end of the season. And then when we get to that summer, I'm saying, you, 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 you're not good enough and you're not, you, you won't be remaining at this football club come the summer. Frank Lampard isn't going to make that known now, is he? Because that would just disrupt the apple cart and would disrupt the dressing room. Well, that is one of the tasks as a manager, isn't it? You do what you do, you do what you need to do to get out of a situation and then you address in the summer. And for me, John Joe Kenny being given a new contract, and Andy Lonergan being given a new deal when he's not played a game of football for Everton. You've got Jao Virginia who'll be returning from his loan deal. You've already got uh, Jordan Pickford and Asmir Begovic who will be ahead of him. Then you've got young goalkeepers like Jao Virginia who'll be looking thinking, well, wait, you know, what am I getting out of this? Will the club sell Jao Virginia in the summer? I would expect so because he's probably going to want to be a number one somewhere. <clears throat> you've got Harry Tyra who, to my knowledge, and I could be wrong on this, and if I am wrong, please, please do let me know, but to my knowledge... Harry Ta uh, sorry, Andy Lonergan was brought in as late as he was and in, in the way and manner in which he was, i.e. I don't even think the club really announced him. In fact, and the club didn't announce him. Rafael Benitez announced him in a press conference saying, oh yeah, and we've signed Andy Lonergan as well. It wasn't even an announcement by the club until after that. The reason that was done, to my knowledge and my recollection, again, as I said, I could be wrong, was because Harry Tyler had picked up an injury which was going to keep him out for a sustained period of time, so we needed effectively another name to, to fill that space, hence Andy Lonergan. But when Harry Tyler comes back, surely doesn't he not fill that space? And then some people will say, well, you're going to go, Harry Tyler goes out for a loan deal to, to go out on loan, fine. Joe Virginia, does he not fill that space? Why are we persistent on giving contacts to players? Because they're here and they've not got another club to go to and we don't want to let them go. Why? Do the club think that giving John Joe Kenny a new contact will spark teams' interest in him? Because I don't think it will. <clears throat> it just, it just again, it's it's it, it it's a representation of the mess that we're in at the moment. And as I said, and I will continue to reiterate, I don't want to do streams and videos like this because I want it to be as positive as possible. I want it to be as sort of, you know, not necessarily as happy as possible, but just 
you know, looking at the positives to, to get us out of this situation. In the next couple of days, I'm going to be doing streams that look at those positive sides because we need to get, a th- you know, three points at Leicester and we need to make sure that, you know, we get out of this situation and the teams around us are still dropping points. They're still losing games. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to get out of it. But things like this are, are little reminders as to why we're in the situation that we're in. And when I read this article before, it just reminded me, ah, that's why we're battling relegation at the moment. Because of gross mismanagement at the top of the football club and absolutely baffling um, um, decisions being made by by the the people in charge. Baffling decisions being made by... And if it's Frank Lampard making these decisions, then maybe he just wants to keep the apple cart tidy and maybe he's just said to the paper, yeah, they might get new contacts in the summer when really in the back of his mind he's thinking, let me just keep things sweet, let's get to the summer and then I'm going to fuck half of this squad off because they're not good enough. Maybe that is the case. Maybe I'm reading too far into it. But given contact extensions to players that simply don't deserve it and aren't good enough to be at the football club, is baffling. What's next? Are we going to give Sheng Tosin a contact extension because you know he, he he likes to spray on his hair and he he goes he goes and watches the game even when he's not in the squad? Are we going to give him a contact extension for that? You know, would it surprise anybody? No, it wouldn't surprise anybody. First and foremost, Everton need to stay in the Premier League and Frank Lampard's biggest task at the moment is to ensure that Everton stay in the Premier League and ensure that Everton avoid relegation but when when is this football club going to actually start being ran and act like a professional business forgetting act like a big football club or a you know a, a giant football club that we know Everton are forget that I just want this football club to act and be run like a business A multi-million pound business, which is what it is. And in multi-million pound businesses, if there's employees that are not doing their jobs properly and they come to the end of their contracts, they will not be given new contracts. It's as simple as that. And there is a bit of positive news surrounding Everton Football Club at the moment. There was a report yesterday to say that Everton are in talks with Anthony Barry at Chelsea to try and get him over, which would be an unbelievable sign. And Anthony Barry coming over and joining part of the coaching team would be fantastic. There's obviously news about Bramley Moore as well, and we're going to touch on all of that tomorrow. We're going to do a live stream tomorrow afternoon, touching on absolutely all of that and, and sign it. You know, again, look at the positives of the football club at the moment. But for me, you know, there's certain players in this squad that, are oh, now to contact in the summer who I'd be turning around to and saying, listen, you're not you're not part of the plans for the future. We all know, we know whether we had a great win against Manchester United and whether we need to stay positive and whether we need to rally together and get behind the squad. We know that and none of the squad will be watching this video. So, you know, you don't need to worry about that. But, Let's be honest. We all know deep down that there's a lot of there's a lot of players at this football club that shouldn't be anywhere near this football club. But there's a there's a certain there's a certain number of them that are out of contract this summer, and to read that, a couple could be given new contracts. Is <coughs> it's baffling? It's absolutely baffling. And that, this might seem like I've got a personal problem with John Joe Kenny, or and I haven't got a personal problem with 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 him whatsoever. I haven't. He's just not good enough to be at Everton Football Club. And that's fine. He was given a contract at a time when we didn't quite know whether he was good enough to be at Everton Football Club. And we give him a contract. He went out on a couple of loans. You know, he didn't do great. He's come back. He's had a, 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 a you know, a, 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 an important role to play this season. And he's had enough chance and enough opportunity for the manager and for, you know, the club to, sh- well, for them to should, to, to should be able to say, that doesn't make sense, um, yeah, yeah this, this lad isn't good enough. And to think that somebody within the club, be it the manager or somebody else, thinks that he is good enough is baffling because am I watching different football than, than they are? Am I watching different performances? Than, am I watching a different John Joe Kenny than what they are? Yes, he gives everything. Yes, he works hard. Yes, he gives it 100%. But defensively, he's woeful. His positioning is woefully off. offers nothing going forward. Why is it a new contact even being entertained? Is this, again, this might just be, you know, this might just be an article that, has come from Frank Lampard being asked, the, you know, an off-the-cuff question and him saying, yeah, they might get new contacts and really, in the, in his mind, he's thinking, no, not a chance, but he just doesn't want to say because he doesn't want to up, upset the squad. But for me, if, if Everton are genuinely considering giving a new contact to somebody like John Joe Kenny or Fabian Delph or, 
Cheng Tosin or anybody of that ilk, then it it, it again it's it it further indicates why we're in the situation that we're in. Um, we know there's a lot of Deadwood in this squad, and what should you do with Deadwood? Try and get rid of it, try and move it on, not reinstate it in the football club because it's there and you may as well give it a new contract. That just makes no sense to me. Absolutely makes no sense. Uh, listen, we've got loads of comments. 50 people watching at 10 past 11 on a Saturday night, which is mad. I know the UFC is on as well, so I apologise that I've gone live when the UFC is on. If you are enjoying, by the way, please hit that like button. All right, mate, says Andy. What's happening, Andy? Andy Lonigan, Canel lad, says... Um, <coughs> Louis, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm here though, says Wamey is right. Want Begovic too, but Swerve, Kenny and Lonergan. Basic Tig says UFC is on. What's going on? Sorry, mate. I just, as I said, I read this article and I just thought, you know what? I need to do a video. I need to do a live stream. I need to sit down and, and just, you know, as I said, I don't want to do the, I don't want to do negative streams. I don't want to do negative videos. I don't want to, that's why I haven't done a, you know, a, 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 a keep all sell video. And it's not, you know, I know Toffee TV have done one and I've watched it and it's, it's absolutely brilliant and, and, you know, everybody's entitled to do what they want. But for me, I just think at the minute, I, it, I'm really, really finding it difficult to think of content, to create and think of content to make around Everton because everything around the football club is so negative at the moment. And we're in such a situation where we can't really afford to be negative at the moment. We all need to be positive. We all need to look at the bright side of things. We all need to rally together for, you know, the right... I think football today for Everton has been great. Watford have lost and Norwich have lost. If Burnley lose, you know, whenever they play, is, is, is their game tomorrow against West Ham? Obviously, they've, they've just sacked Sean Dyche. I think Ben Mee has taken charge yet tomorrow at, at 2.15 away to West Ham. So if West Ham can pick all, all three points there, which they absolutely should, they're off the back of a, you know, a wonderful win midweek in the Europa League to, to say, uh, solidify themselves in the in the semi-finals, then it will have been a fantastic weekend for Everton. An absolutely brilliant weekend. And, and we've got to try and look at the positives, but every everything topical-wise around Everton is so negative and so the board are a disgrace. And we know I've done plenty of videos in the past about the board that are an absolute shambles. The owner needs to sell up, the chairman, the, the CEO, they all need to walk at the end of the season, regardless of whether we stay up or not. But... As I said, you know that that situation is is one that isn't really isn't a positive one. That other certain other situations, keep or sell is one that would get into it. So you know, so they're all streams that I will I will be doing and I will be covering and I will be making. But I want to do when we're out of this situation, so we can. So you know, I, I, again, people can't say, oh, you're you're just making it worse by do, saying this, or you're just making it worse by saying that. But this today, I just couldn't. I I honestly couldn't. Um, I couldn't avoid. I watched it and it and it just made me literally think, yeah, this is this is the situation, you know, this is why we're in the situation that we're in now because of silly financial decisions like this. <clears throat> and you might say, oh, can but Andy Lonigan's only on this amount a week, or John Joe Kenny's only on this amount a week. It's it's money that we could save or could spend elsewhere. Yeah, I uh, I don't know, mate. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Am I the only one frustrated with this? Am I the only one that was a little bit annoyed when I seen this article? Let, please let me know if you're watching live. If you're enjoying, by the way, please hit that like button. Uh, <coughs> even and everyone says, where me? What's happening? Charlie says, what a night, John Joe Cruyff on a seven-year deal. Uh, oh, well, well, swerves that. Says Louis. Well, uh, again, you know, you're absolutely right, Kevin Thelwell, new director of football. You know, this is his first summer, um, you know, of, uh, of uh, at the football club. Um decisions will certainly be scrutinised and, and he will be judged on the decisions that he makes uh, and given John Joe Kenny a new contact will be one that won't go down very well with a lot of Evertonians same with Andy Lonergan as I said as Mia Begovic I'm, I, it doesn't it doesn't massively affect me too much because he's a good number two um, but I think if Asmir Begovic gets a new contact it would probably solidify the end of Joe Virginia's time as, as, a, as an Everton goalkeeper because I think Joe Virginia should absolutely at this point be the number two at the very, very least. Um, he, you know, he should be fighting for that number one shirt with Jordan Pickford. He's young. He'll be wanting to get first team football. He's definitely got talent. He's definitely got a future. But if you know, if 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 he's not going to be the number two, I think that will spell the end of his Everton career. Maybe that's why John Joe is uh, sorry. Maybe that's why uh, Asmir Begovic is being salted with a new deal. I, I don't know, but. You know what? What else are we gonna to get to? Are we gonna give, as I said, are we gonna give Cheng To someone just because you know for the sake of it? Are we gonna give Fabian Delph one because he's had a, you know a couple of good games? It's 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 just you know it's baffling. It's absolutely baffling. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, there you go. Where are we? Jeez, we know Cam isn't happy when he's seeming at this hour. Uh, says Carla. What's happening, Carla? Charlie says, worth keeping both keepers means not searching for the number two, number three. I don't think we'd have to search for the number three. You know, you, you know. again, how often does your number three goalkeeper start? Harry Tyler could be the number three and still play in the under-23s. Jal Virginia could be the number three and, and, you know, at what point do we look at these young goalkeepers and think you're good enough to be at least the number three? Maybe Tyler, you're looking at going out on the reserves, uh, sorry, going out on loan and getting some experience and that's fine, that's a different situation. But, again, I, I just, for me, regardless of who it is or what role they have in this team, given contract extensions to players that are out of contract who don't deserve extensions because they're not good enough and haven't been good enough doesn't make any business sense to me it doesn't and and listen i'm not very business savvy i don't own businesses i don't run businesses so maybe there'll be someone watching that does own and run businesses you'll be able to see the you know the the, the more i don't know business savvy side of this and will put me in my place but i just it just doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense um it's the echo calm down says Celta. yeah Possibly, yeah, true. Uh, Thomas says, yeah, Begovic is sound competent number two. I don't mind him at all. At least of our worries, Kenny can get... To... <laughs> he just he just shouldn't be getting a new deal, should he? Let's be honest. I swear if John Joe gets a contact, I'm going to support Sam, yeah. Uh, Harold, so... Uh, sorry, it says Everton, so disorientated with signing anybody right now are capable of signing Zachel as a footballer. He'll wait on collisions to play his blood. Louis says, why would we extend the contact of the third choice fullback in Kunku coming back as well? Well, there you go. You've got... You've got Patterson... He'll be back in the squad next season, uh, and hopefully, will be um, will be starting games. You'll have Seamus Coleman, who will, I assume, be given a new deal, or a new, or, or will I don't know when his, his deal runs out. Um, but I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against giving Seamus Coleman a new deal. Again, my problem with Seamus isn't him being at the football club or being a bit part player. It's him starting every week. We he's not good enough for that. But if, as I said, after Manchester Manchester United, Seamus proved that if he plays every now and then, he can put in a really, really good performance. You've got Nkunku, you've got Mikhailenko, you've got Godfrey who can play there. I just don't see the need in a new contract. I really, really don't. Uh, Harold says, given guys like Kenny, etc., it's just blocking the progress of the younger players. It's almost, for me, just seems like we're just giving him a contract because we, you know, he's comfortable here and we're, we're comfortable with him here and, and nobody really wants to buy him. I mean, I just, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a problem with John Joey shit as SRP. Uh, Philip says ones. Hey Jack. Um, hope the effing toffees camp says Liam is right. Johnny says evening camp brother. Did you see the under twenty threes last night? Positives there. Some cracking young talent for Thelwell to get. I did. Uh, I seen the highlights. Didn't see the game. I seen the highlights. Yeah, some really really good players in there. Some really really good performers. Obviously Dobbin played. Um, Jared Branthwaite played as well. So players that are already integrated into the first team getting some um, game time and getting some you know run out, which was which was good. Uh, results went our way today. Come on, you iron, says Ian. Absolutely give Delph a new contact, <laughs> says Wamey. Well, again, prior to Man United, if I was to say to you, uh, Delph could be given a new contact, everybody would say, well, why, why, why? Now it might be a different question, but again, <clears throat> Delph, I don't I don't think Delph should be given a new contact, by the way, I don't. I think one performance in four years doesn't warrant you getting a new contract. However, I think it would make more sense to give Delph a new contact than it would John Joe Kenny. Because when Delft's in the team, more often than not, you know you're gonna get a solid performance. You know, you know, there's there's a league winning player in there who is technical and can console and manage a midfield. John Joe for me is just not a very good footballer. Uh, and says Kenny, it's Everton Cam, they flogging a, 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 a mummified horse. Uh, I laugh, but we will drop a masterclass against City, says Ant. Um Listen. Listen again. I'm not I'm not saying John Joe hasn't played well this season. But you know, playing well on one or one or two occasions doesn't doesn't warrant a new contact at a football club who are in a desperate financial situation like we're in and are fighting relegation because of having a squad full of players who simply aren't good enough who have been given silly contacts, i.e. Michael Keane, <clears throat> i.e. Mason Holgate. But yeah. Uh, Hernandez says, all the best, Cam, on holiday at Disney Magic Kingdom. Oh, my God, Hernandez, I'm so jealous. I wish I was there. Martin says, do not give Delph... The Delph, Delph isn't... I was just an example I was using. Delph 
isn't being rumoured to be given a new contract. The rumour is John Joe Kenny, Asmir Begovic and Andy Lonergan, according to the Echo. And it's not they will be, it could be offered a new contract, um, which is mad. Uh, he has one game, then 16 bad. You need to move them on, says Ant. John Joe has not played well, says Wamey. Paul says, rather watch me Nan take a shit after the Jal Frazee than watching another season of John Joe Kenny playing right back. That is, that's that's a big statement. That is a big statement, to be fair. Uh, watching from the line, a big thunder mountain is right. And Andes is right. I'm extremely jealous. I'm extremely jealous, my mate. Um, and Tommy says, I'm in shock. John Joe Kenny getting a new contact. It, I thought it was a joke to say. Well, again, this isn't, this isn't, I'm not, you know, these players mightn't be given new contact, but I just seen the article on the Echo and I seen the tweets and I thought, you know what, I'm going to have something to say about this because I just don't agree with it whatsoever. And I thought, why not do a stream on a Saturday night? It, it, it's it's literally 20 past 11 and I know it'd be different times, whatever different people are at, but there's 61 people watching me rant about Everton on a Saturday night. 35 likes, if you could get the likes up, that would be amazing. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Listen, before we end, I want to end it on saying that there's a lot of situations going on in Everton Football Club at the moment that I could sit here and do hours, hours live streams every single day talking about the board, the running of the football club, the financial situation, the losses that were announced a couple of weeks ago that we didn't do a video on, um, you know, some of the, 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 the performances of players, this contract news, of course, which we have done a video on, but, you know, a lot of different things going on at the moment that aren't necessarily positive that we could sit here and talk for hours and hours and hours on. But my priority at the moment, and I think everybody at this football club and everybody associated with this football club's priority at the moment, should be just getting to safety. Just being all right this season. Avoiding relegation, being safe, and then we can have all of these conversations in the summer. And we've had them all before anyway. How many times have we ranted about the board? How many times have we ranted about the players or the mismanagement of the football club? We've had all of these conversations before, but we can have them all again in the summer. For me, my priority at the moment is just getting behind these players. We are going to do a live stream tomorrow. We're going to talk about Bramley Moore. We're going to talk about the Anthony Barney news. We're going to talk about some of the things that have been in the news as well. Um, as I said, for me at the moment, the content over the next couple of weeks or so, I'm going to try and make it. Obviously, the instant match reactions, the play ratings, the reviews will be there. And if we get beaten and we lose and we lose heavily, they're not going to be positive videos, of course. They're not because, you know, I'm not going to sit here after losing to, you know, I don't know, let's say Brentford or Leicester and, and, and City and try and be positive. They, they will be as they come because that's what the, 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 the post-game videos are. But other videos, I'm, I'm going to try and avoid for the minute the topics that, will get me wound up and will create a bit of a negative thing because I just want to focus on Everton being all right and being safe and staying in the Premier League. Um, and then we can look at all of this in, 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 in due course. And I hope that's what Frank Lampard's doing. I hope Frank Lampard at the minute is saying, don't worry about player contracts. Let's just get to safety and then I'll decide who's good enough to stay and, who's good, and who isn't good enough and needs to leave. Um, but yeah, as I said, we will be back tomorrow. We're going to do another stream tomorrow. We're going to go through some of the latest news and stuff. So don't forget to look out for that one. Um, and says, sorry, um, where are we? And says easier said than done. Remy says he's been in that line. I've never actually been to Disney. I've been to Florida, I've been to LA, but we never went to the Disney parks. I know, I know. Uh, Chris says if we replace John Joe with a better fullback than the contact renewal doesn't make sense but currently we need to strengthen other areas as a, as a priority far more than the fullback position I'd agree uh, but I even think now having you know centre backs that can do a job at right back and having Nathan Patterson and Seamus Coleman I don't think we need to give John Joe a new contract who's making these decisions is it Lampard or the board says Ant well we don't know we don't know it's not even a decision it's just an article saying could, but I just thought I'd, I'd speak on the article. So this isn't by any means a, a final decision and, and these players are going to get contact. It's just a, probably a, a bit of, you know, a, a, again, a bit of news and rumours being being stared in, in the local newspapers. But they're the types of things that we come on and talk about, don't they? They're the types of things that we, we like to sit down and we like to talk about at 10 past, 20 past 11 on a, on a Saturday night. Um and then, uh, Kriever always says, hey, can we understand Begovic? He's a good backup, but Kenny has been awful for ages, and Lonergan, we only need one season, as Joe Virginia is back next season. Yeah, Chris uh, says, so if we sent in the other areas and keep the fullbacks as is, I'd say we knew. I just, again, I just don't think there's a need for John Joe Kenny to, 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 to have his contact renewed. I'd renew Seamus Coleman's, I'd have him as the backup, I'd have... 
uh, Nathan Patterson as the number one. And if Nathan Patterson isn't deemed good enough to be the number one, then I'd go out and buy another fullback. It's as simple as that. If Nathan Patterson isn't good enough to be our number one right back next season, then we need to sign a right back. Not give John Joe a new contract or, you know, make sure Seamus plays there. We need to sign a new right back. And then the new right back is the number one. Nathan Patterson lands off him and is the number two. And Seamus is the number three. And John Joe is, I don't know, doing something else. Um, enjoy the ride, mate. It's my favourite at the Disney parks. Just keep away. Is right. Just stay up. That is our priority. Yes, Mark, absolutely, mate. See, it says where me. John says could be where she could be working with Ned full time. I'd love to work with Ned full time. I really, really would. And Eugene says Mina is back for Everton versus Leicester. Let's hope so. Joe Virginia has an obligation to buy at Sporting. Apparently, well, I don't think he's played much to be fair. So I'm sure they'll try and make it their way around that. Um, but yeah, there you go. Look, I just thought we'd do a little video. Didn't think it'd go on for 35 minutes, so uh, I appreciate all of the support. If you have enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Massive thanks to everybody for watching the live comments. Really do appreciate it. If you're watching the YouTube video, leave your thoughts down below. Am I overreacting to this? Am I just a little bit frustrated because it's a Saturday night and I'm not in the pub with my mates having a bevy? Or do you all feel, you know, that, 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 that I'm warranted in my frustration towards this situation? As I said, it is just a, you know, it is just an, um, a rumour. And it might, nothing might come of it whatsoever. But, you know, when things like this are, are put out there and publicised, I thought, you know what, we'll sit down and we'll have a little talk about it. EFC Andy says, when's the United review? It's up, mate. It's up. It was, it was when did we do that? Monday, Tuesday, um, something like that. So, yeah, go and check that out. And a massive happy 50th to Baz for yesterday as well, Eugene says in the comments. Uh, massive happy 50th birthday. I, I have spoken to Baz, um, but wishing him the, uh, the very best, of course. Anyway, we are going to finish it there. Then if you have enjoyed this one, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new. And yeah, we will be back at some point, probably afternoon-ish, 12, 12.30, something like that tomorrow to talk more about Everton. So please do hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Massive, massive thank you all for watching and we will see you soon on the Mighty Blues. Cheers for watching. See you after.